I'm resuming our discussion. I'm resuming our discussion which where we stopped yesterday. I'm sharing my screen, guys. So let me know once you're able to see my screen. Able to see my screen? Yes, Simon. Okay, thank you. See here, guys. Yesterday we have discussed. Uh, so like, uh, what is the need of database? So we have taken an example of uh, Excel file where um, uh, we can save our data in this fashion, like any business data. We have taken the example of uh, sales information of a retail store. So there we have uh, uh, made seven entries of which are of different, different product categories. And we were having few questions, like few analytical questions around that data. So for few of the questions, we were able to directly give answers through the Excel uh, filtering option. But for few of the questions, we are depending again uh, through manual intervention. So like, uh, um, initially day by sales, we will be able to get information by filtering data on date basis, like only, uh, only by selecting 29th, 30, like that. Okay. So after, uh, arriving with date wise sales, if you want to understand which particular date is having more sales, highest sales, then we are manually comparing each value like 3000, 22,000, 450, 37,000. Okay. So 27th is a uh, date, which is having highest sales. So this way we are doing a manual intervention here. Okay. And one more thing, uh, Excel is also having some limitations in terms of for storage. Let's see, uh, we have discussed about one use case where one business is having a thousand sales happening uh, per day. Okay. Otherwise you take the example of DMART. Yes. So DMART people are operating through different, different locations. True or not? If within a single city, we'll be having more than two or three uh, DMART centers operated, true or not. Within Hyderabad, we'll be having some five to six uh, DMART locations operated in different, different areas. Like that, if you are having our business operated in multiple cities, let's suppose 10 cities. In 10 cities, in each city, I'm having four locations. Then overall, my total locations are how many guys? I'm having my DMART, look, uh, look, DMART operated in, in, I'm the owner of DMART. I'm having, I'm operating this in 10 cities and in each city, I'm having uh, four locations. Then total, uh, how many locations I'll be having guys? 40, right? 40 DMART centers, true or not? 10 cities into four locations, 40 locations. Yes, I'm audible. Yes, so much. Okay. So total 40 DMART locations. So, and imagine, in each demand center, how many uh, sale counters we'll have, guys? At least minimum size. I believe everyone is aware of how demand operates. Minimum size. Yeah, minimum size. Minimum okay. size 10, right? Yeah. Minimum size 10. Okay. 10 cities, 4 centers, total 40 centers. In each center, we'll be having 10 counters. Cities locations so total uh, demand centers even and counters now tell me guys overall how many counters across 40 centers will have in a single day 400 counters operating right overall my business getting operated through 400 counters true or not guys 40 centers into 10 counters how much 400 and imagine on an average in a single demand center, how many entries are going to happen per day? How many sales? How many sales in the sense? How many people entering demand and exiting demand with some purchasing some goods, like even a single brush, toothpaste, or multiple goods or groceries, anything? Imagine what will be the count, guys? Average. Minimum side, some 1,000 to 1,500, right? 1,000 to 1,500, minimum side per day, or all day. Yeah, minimum side, minimum side, some 1,200 to 1,500, true or not? Yes. Okay, I'll take average 1,200. <clears throat> so, per single day, 48,000 sales transactions will happen. This is average sales per counter. So overall sales counter, well, what will be the overall? Uh, it is like 4,80,000, I think. Yes. 
ஒன்னு <laughs> So now 4,80,000 is a sales transaction per day. Sales transaction in the sense, what is a sales transaction? What it involves, guys? A sales transaction involves what? It involves a product, quantity, and what is the price you are purchasing at? True or not, guys? Yes. Okay. So remember, imagine if, they, if you are going to maintain 4,80,000 records sale information, per day in an excel file what will be the uh, count of uh, sale transaction per month per month what will be the sale transaction per month guys 48 lakhs into 3 almost it is 1 crore 44 lakhs 1 crore 44 lakhs transaction only single month data oh sorry 1 crore 44 lakhs again if you go with an year then it will be like by 10 i mean into 10 you can say like 14 crore sale records 14 crore sale records 14 crores and if demat business is going to close next year no it will be a continuous business right it till remains like next 25 30 years and imagine are we able to maintain such huge data in an excel file guys it's impossible because excel is also having some limitation in terms of maintaining data see so what is that maximum row number it is showing guys i did control down arrow i have hit control down arrow on my keyboard it has taken me to the last row of my excel sheet tell me the guys what is the count here 1 lakh 10 lakh 10,000,576 so 10 lakhs 48,576 in the sense in one sheet i'll be able to maintain only two days related sale transaction because one day related sale transaction is 4 lakhs 80,000 in my demand business and your file size will be in gbs and you will be unable to open that excel file on your machine itself and how can you do analysis getting my point is getting my point yes sir man excel helps us up to some extent only up to some extent like uh, only uh, some uh, 20 to 30 transactions happening per day like that such business can maintain their data in excel file okay but the few business people like the enterprise people who are having uh, their business operated in uh, different different location in across country those people need alternate solution alternate solution so where are database people entered into picture where are database need entered i mean entered into picture okay so database is nothing but a one more computer guys imagine just understand database nothing but one machine it is a one machine and what a machine contains machine nothing but a computer guys what a computer machine contains guys what a machine contains it will have processor it will have some memory hard disk right like 520 420 gb or 600 gb something like that it will have what one more thing ram 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 so these are uh, primary qualities of a computer a server a database nothing but it resides inside a computer where it uses memory of that machine and database comes with comes as a software where we install that particular database software on that computer 
and we will allocate some memory to that uh, database. And inside the database, we'll create tables and we will save our data into those tables. Clear so far, everyone? So, okay, so we'll save our data into those tables. Once data is available in those tables, we will be able to analyze that data using SQL language, structured query language. I'm, I'm trying to give you the brief about the need of database, guys, so that once you understand these basics, then you can uh, understand like, okay, so I need SQL for this purpose. So, and SQL is meant for analyzing data and database is meant for organizing the enterprise business data. Why I'm calling enterprise business? Because whenever I say enterprise, then people will be having their business operated in different, different locations, more than one location. Like more, more supermarkets are there, DMART, Reliance, Reliance Trends are there, like that guys. Okay, so the initial purpose of uh, initial need of our database, we are clear. We are clear, right? What is the initial need of a database server, guys? Organizing business data. Organizing business data. Okay, once our data is organized, like getting maintained in a database, then we can use SQL to deal with the data and we can analyze the data. And once we analyze the data, those results again, those can be saved in another database or another machine, another computer, which is called Veros, guys. So this Veros always contains the analyzed information. Analyzed information. What will be the use, guys? Let's suppose I'm having 100 tables in my business here in the in my database and I have spent uh, some 48 hours time to analyze my data and come up with few insights about my business few insights about my business I spent 48 hours of analysis analysis analyzing time and I came up with some insights in my business saying okay grocery sales is this much Okay, on October on 9, 29 November stationary sales is this much. This way I analyzed, I, it took some 48 hours time on top of all my 100 tables. I have spent uh, 48 hours time using SQL and I have derived few understandings, few insights in my business. And if I do not save this information in another way, like in somewhere, if I want to access this information in future, again, what I need to do guys, what I need to do, Come on, guys. Again, we have to spend same 48 hours time to analyze and come up with this output. True or not? Okay, see here in this Excel file, what I did, initially I have recorded data. After that, I have given you questions and we have analyzed and we have recorded answers also. What if I select and delete all the analysis result here? I do not save this result. I'll remove all this. I have saved my file and closed. And again, if I open my file and if I having, if I'm having the same questions again, if I asked with the same questions again, then I do not have access to those questions and answers, analytical questions and answers, true or not. So Ooh. what I need to do again, I need to spend my time. I have to go and I have to filter my uh, product category and everything. And I have to start analyzing my data freshly. So here, what is getting wasted? What is getting wasted? Time. time perfect time is getting wasted unnecessarily true or not so once we analyze oh. our data if we can save that analyzed results somewhere then those we, those can be used i mean this data is not at all not at all required in the sense okay this is the basis to derive to derive few analytical results this is the basis to derive few analytical results so once i do analysis and if i have all the answers to my questions this way then i don't need to uh, bother about this data because business people are more interested in this data true or not as a business owner you look at this kind of data you do you're not interested in single record of sales transaction say like okay what is book okay 15 quantity purchased okay okay this way no business user is interested in to look into each sale transaction remember business users always focused on high level business statistics what is high level business statistics statistics these are the statistics guys 
what is total grocery sales today in my shop in my business okay this much okay total sports sales okay uh -huh. so stationery is going very low uh, so i need to add some discounts here true or not guys by looking at this by looking at this insights these insights i can decide like i can understand okay stationery sales are much lesser in my store much lesser so to increase to improve what is the area of improvement guys here tell me what is the area of improvement which area needs improvement here stationery sales stationery sales need to be improved yeah. here in your business and grocery and sports sales are going well but stationery sales are very less when compared to other two how how are you going to understand this once you are able to analyze your sales information and consolidate that sales information into some analytical result clear so far everyone clear so far yes sir okay. yes sir thank you so here what i do okay this is my insight about these are insights about my business now i understood okay stationery sales are much lesser when compared to other two categories so here what i need to do either i need to go for offering discounts okay or what is the other option i have to stop selling these items because if i do not have any business for this stationary items why should i go for purchase and maintain stock and make that stock dead true or not true or not guys yes so much okay see now see now carefully observe this is called insight insight meaningful information from your business data okay and what is this guys decision making it's okay based on the insights how insights are created on what basis insights are created based on my business sales data carefully observe the link guys this is my sales data of my this is sales data of my business based on this sales data i have drawn these insights after listing all the insights insight nothing but you understanding about your business you can say guys meaningful meaningful understandings about the data meaningful understandings about the data see if you look at this single record what is the meaningful understanding here guys can anyone tell me only if you look at one sales transaction oil 18 uh, liters quantity 147 price okay 2646 is the total price so by looking at the single tra sales transaction what insight we are getting simply we can say okay this is a sales that uh, happened uh, for oil product uh, 18 liters someone purchased on this date that's all is it going to be an insight or some sales information sales information simple sales information but if you collectively if you collectively draw conclusions from the collective data instead of single single record this is the information this is called insight once you have insights about your business then you can do business sorry decision making clear guys everyone clear yes sir okay perfect so once you have insights about your business then you can the business people can take decisions okay simply they look at okay stationery okay provide 20 percent discount for two months and see after two months if your sales not increased then we'll go for stopping uh stationary sales apply 20 percent business this is this is decision making and this is insight how the insight is created how the insight is created based on the analysis of your business data why i'm stressing this point more and more guys once you understand this relation once you understand uh, this hierarchy you are very much clear you are going to learn only technical aspects from now onwards but this is a functional aspect where you have to more clear about here the kind of business we are dealing is a retail store one but the same is the case with any business because business people are doing business for profits and they want to track their profits with meaningful insights this way one they and to get insights you have to do some analysis on the data and to do that analysis you need some medium in between in our case limited seven sale transactions were there and we have used some filtering concept to arrive with 
these insights. If my sale transactions are huge, say like 10,000 per day, then I'll go with another medium called SQL, where using this SQL st uh, structured query language, I can analyze my business data, I can draw my required insights, and based on those insights, I can, I can take a business decision, which improves my business. Why people take decisions in business, guys? Tell me, guys. For improvement their business. Perfect. Improve the business. business. Improvement, right? So, the what is the target here? Into the business or improve the sales, stationary Making sales. Making profit. Yeah. Egg the profit. Obviously, obviously, yeah, correct. Yeah. See, here they have taken a decision making here. Apply twenty percent discount on stationary sales. What is the target? Improve stationary sales to ten thousand. This is their target. This way, business people think, guys. This way business people think. So now, what is the key thing here? Come to general discussion. What is the key thing? What made business people help? I mean, what made business people um, uh, to go with uh, this decision making? What insights. made the Sorry? Insights. Perfect. Insights. And how insights were created? Insights. And how insights are created? Analysis the data. Perfect. By analyzing our business data, we can create insights. Okay, we have to generally think, uh, we have to improve our general thinking guys. If you are having sales data, then if you are running, if you are running, if you are running small uh, retail store guys, small fancy store, let's suppose, small fancy store, end of the day, what is your insight in the, from that store? Simple. No, analysis data. Ah, simple. Total sales ah, correct. Expenditure. Uh, Total sales for that day. Total. And what is the one more thing? Important thing? Profit or profit for or loss for that day. Loss. That's all. These are my insights. Every business owner looks on these three things. What is my expenditure? What is my total sales? So whether I'm running in profit or loss. If in profit or loss, what is that number? Let's suppose expenditure is 500. My total sales is 25. And my profit is something like 180 rupees something. Plus positive. This one. Answer. Clear is? Always remember, on top of business data, we do analysis to draw insights. Once insights are drawn, business people, by looking at those insights, business people can draw decision makings to improve their business by setting some targets. I hope everyone is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, now, so here, what is the what is the count of product category in my business in the example i have taken what is the count of product category seven yeah seven is collective count but if you go with mm -hmm. unique or unique or uh, listing four. values three, three no, groceries three. sports stationery. i have only three categories and all the sales spread across different different categories clear what is a distinct count? What is a product category? Only three categories I'm selling in my shop. What are those? Grocery, sports, and stationery. Sports, 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 and stationery. I'm stationary. selling only three product categories. Now, as I'm having only three categories, I'm having only three values here. And it is very simple for me to understand which particular category sales is low. Because how many values I need to compare here? Three values. Only three values. It is simple, right? Three. I'll compare these two. Okay, this is higher. I'll compare these two. This is higher. This way I can understand, okay, this is highest value. If I under, if I want to go uh, to and evaluate lowest value, I compare first these two. Okay, this is low. And I'll compare these two. Okay, this is low. It's simple. What if my business contains some hundred or more than hundred? More than hundred product categories and answer my question here deriving which particular deriving which particular sales is lesser or higher am i given with directly with a decision or am i manually intervening and understanding that information and doing that manually understanding the data yeah what if if my product category count is greater than 100 or 100 
in that case how many category how many values i need to compare understanding my point three values we have to no three not three see here if product category is grocery sports and station only three but what if my product category count is 100 product category in the sense uh, stationery grocery sports um, kids wear men's wear women's wear something like that if i am having 100 categories in my business all 100 categories we should choose. 100. Uh, 100 categories i have to visit okay. or not 100 categories i have to visit okay. so to avoid that issue so that is very uh, tedious manual job right very tedious manual job true or not yes, so to avoid that okay. issue what we are doing we are using business people like once we give insights these insights are meant for business people so these insights are meant for uh, business people okay so once these insights are created and saved in a warehouse table we use reporting tools what those reporting tools will do see here these three sales i'm selecting these three sales and i'm going here uh, one second guys i'm going here uh, i mean so yes i'm selecting these three sales information i'm creating a graph now tell me guys by looking at this graph simply without looking at the values just simply looking at this graph what can i say which particular bar is higher highest i mean uh, taller grocery sales grocery sales grocery sales grocery sales. just yeah, by yeah. looking at this graph i can simply say okay this tallest bar is the highest sales one if i focus on the tallest bar it is showing 40146 getting my point yes sir text so here representing your insights in terms of text and representing your representing your insight in terms of visual which one is uh, more appealing visual visual is more appealing that's why these reporting tools will play a bigger role you have created good insights which improves your business but if you're unable to present that information as part of beautiful visuals like this, business people will be unable to understand. If you present that information in the form of visual, okay, see here, okay, tallest bar is highest sales. Okay, um, smallest bar is lowest sale. Okay, so this is tallest bar, this is lowest bar. This way they can understand. If they have 100 bars here in this chat, they can simply say tallest bar is the highest sale one, lowest bar is the smallest sale one. Clear? So, here, reporting tools such like uh, Power BI, Tableau will come into picture. Okay. So here, for analysis purpose, SQL Server we'll use. And warehousing purpose, we are having a few uh, tools like uh, MSBA, Business Intelligence, Microsoft Business Intelligence we use for warehouse. I mean, once to draw this insights and create warehouse. To deal with data, we'll use SQL. And to create reports, Visuals, we'll use Power BI or Tab, something like reporting tools. Clear, guys? I hope everyone is clear about the overview. What's the need of uh, maintaining data digitally? Yes, sir, man. Okay. Clear, guys. That's all, guys. That's all for the day. I'll take next session. Um, uh, I'll take you with SQL discussion. So this is all uh, overview I wanted to give everyone. So he's uh, having their backgrounds like radiation from BSc or some other streams. Okay, I just wanted to give them this brief. And it is also helpful for the people who are uh, having BTEC background as well. Okay. So with this understanding, we'll start learning SQL. So this first part, we'll start learning. After that, we'll learn MSBA. After that, we'll learn Power BI. This is collective suit. Once you learn all these things, you're good enough to start your journey with cloud also. Okay. This uh, Once you learn all these things, you're good enough to crack the job and you can start your cloud journey as well parallelly. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Meet you in next session. See that we'll update uh, timing about next session. Thank you. Thank you so See you in next session. Thank you so much. Thank you.